today's agenda, I'm actually working with the O2 Icon Outlet. The O2 centres were all the concerts are hold, held if you're not in a, if you're not London based. Don't know why I'm putting lipstick on. <laughs> I mean, I'm just gonna wear a mask. Should have not bothered with. Actually, I've learned don't put sticky stuff on the lips. It's all about the matte liquid lip. But yeah, I am working with O2 Centre today. I'm popping along. I'm just gonna go about 12. I've got to pick up some stuff for an IGTV video I'm doing with them. And I haven't been shopping in so long, it's gonna be super weird. We have been, I think not, no other country has really done it as much as we have. We have been in lockdown for a long time, since January. So we went in lockdown in November, had like two weeks before Christmas, went back into lockdown in London for Christmas day, and then literally have been in lockdown since Christmas day, basically. So it's been pretty, pretty rubbish month, but to be honest, it's really weirdly started to feel like normal like I can't remember what life was like before it's been a year anyway I am um, I didn't go out Monday I haven't been out yet just because I thought it was a really daft idea I don't know if you saw Soho it was heaving I was like this is just gonna make us all go back down into lockdown again so I don't know I feel like common sense is just ease back into it isn't it and like still keep your distance like Soho was heaving I said this is just gonna cause the lockdown anyway yes yeah, so that is what's on the agenda today and i actually wanted to talk to you guys about something that has been on my mind to chat to you about for a while so i'm going to talk a bit about um it's such it's like the most asked question on my channel i don't know everyone seems very interested about my love life and like if you search laura blair laura blair husband laura blair dating laura blair boyfriend always comes up top um since the start of my YouTube, I haven't had a boyfriend. I was always like a real boyfriend person. Like I always had a relationship. And when I got to about 27, I just stopped because I realized how unhealthy the wrong relationship could be. And I just got into them willy nilly sometimes. Willy nilly, such an English term. So English, isn't it? Um, I would sometimes get into relationship as a rebound and like, I don't know, I just, got myself into relationships that just I shouldn't have been in and I was I I don't know I always just got sucked into long-term relationships and actually they were just completely wrong for me and I've learned how bad um the wrong person can be and whenever I talk about my exes or like past relationships none of my none of my ex-boyfriends and partners have been like evil I think what I've learned is that actually men really struggle with their emotions more than women do and I have in particular had a few um been in relationships where the partner isn't mentally well and I just took such a toll on my my mental health that it, I just had to take a break so I've learned many things <laughs> about my love life but I wanted to say I don't know if you guys know you know I have a friend called Abby, she pops up on my blog quite a lot and if you've been here a while you've seen her a lot and I I finally got myself after, I probably have spoken about it but I've had a lot of bad things happen in terms of relationships, I just basically haven't, I've been treated very badly before and quite a lot over and over again and I don't mean I put up with the bad like as soon as something bad happens I get rid but it seems to happen a lot like the cheating and just the lies and I don't know I don't know I couldn't work out whether I was attracting that behavior I was making people behave like this or whether it was the type of people I was attracting or whether I brought it out in them I couldn't figure out and at about 27 years old I had Oh, my whole twenties of like a quite a rough ride when it came to men and I just clung on to so much hate and like anger towards it and um so my friend Abby is a dating coach a love coach and I feel like therapy and um it's not really talked about and like quite a few youtubers have therapy and it's become more mainstream to get therapy but so a dating coach basically is therapy for your love life and my best friend is that's what she does i'll leave her details down below but i have to say right now as 33 like i'm in the most amazing headspace when it comes to relationships and 
um, men and stuff and it's completely down to her and I just think talking to someone about how you feel and how relationships are played out and just having that aspect just on hand over the years has made me become so strong in terms of dating and relationships and putting yourself out there because I don't know I shut myself off for so long because you have to you have to make yourself vulnerable when you date like no one's perfect everyone can get cheated on and I've learned it actually said when people treat you badly it has nothing to do with you it says more about them um so if you're if you're disrespected don't think oh what is it me it's just always their issues and actually how things have played out over the years it's a hundred percent and i just think having her on my like at hand for all these years has helped me out so much she listens to me constantly and um yeah i just wanted to recommend like i think it should be called love therapy but it's called a dating coach and um whenever i i just literally pl like play off her i run things past her and she never tells me this is what you should do this is what you shouldn't do it's more like you come to it's just talking through things really helps you understand the situation more and um yeah <laughs> i just thought i'd tell you a little bit about my love life <laughs> it's i haven't got one at the moment and i i always feel really nervous talking about it on camera because i think are they could they be watching i'm gonna sort this right now um yeah i always think worried that someone might be watching this and i think nah surely not surely they cannot be watching if any of my uh, potential suitors are watching this just give me a call like don't watch my vlogs and not talk to me <laughs> oh do you know what i'm so good at picking up when people watch my vlogs so good i can immediately immediately tell i don't know it's just like someone will say something i'm like you wouldn't know that unless you'd have you'd have watched like i don't know it's just an aura that i can sense that they know something that they shouldn't if that makes sense so good at picking up on it i'm also really good at picking up on when men cheat and men, like i don't know what it is i can instantly tell i think i'm an empath i can really feel people's emotions um so i can really change i can really feel like a mood change anyway <laughs> so yeah i just wanted to I don't want to go too much into about like the different things that she does but if you're struggling in the department I don't want to say struggling because I haven't really struggled with love over the years um I just have attracted the wrong people into my life <laughs> I'm working on it the secret but definitely if you're struggling with your love life I cannot I honestly cannot re recommend talking to someone and um yeah don't neglect like because so much of your emotions come from your love life like it really affects my mood like I am the most positive person but as soon as someone I care about treats me badly it is a mood hoover like I literally go from here to here within like a second it sucks the life out of me so I'm so quick to get rid of people as soon as they make me feel like that now like gone as soon as you suck my mood I, le I get rid um but yeah I think it's neglected a little bit but it's like people get therapy for loads of other things but one that really specifically caters towards your love life and talking through those emotions I think can really sort your head out it has really helped with me anyway just thought I'd let you know really I get so many questions on it <laughs> hopefully Mr Blair Box is on his way sometime soon but equally I have found such happiness by myself and I I always get a lot of um people that are like oh you're single in your third like 33 and single it's like oh you'll find him you'll find the one and actually I think it's obviously I'd love a family and I'd love kids and stuff but actually I have been in such bad places in relationships that I am super happy by myself like so happy I part of the reason probably why I am single is that I don't crave it um the lowest parts of my life have been because I've been in a bad relationship and yeah I just really appreciate how I feel right now by myself and until someone makes me feel better in a relationship rather than worse 
I'm really happy to be single. I don't think it's an I don't think it's an issue. Like we put so much pressure on ourselves, especially women around my age. Like gotta have kids by 35. Oh my god. So they do. They do community service outside my flat. So they have. What's it called? You know when people have been like arrested or something, they do community service. They brush up the car park and just by chance, like my car, my flats got broken into the other week. I feel like it's a really bad idea. I, can't, I really lost my train of thought, guys. What was I talking about? Oh yeah, the, I feel like women put so much pressure on themselves and society puts pressure on them. Like at 35, you need to pop like all your kids out. Otherwise you're never gonna have kids. And there is a biological clock and I, I understand the pressure, but equally, do you know what? If you don't follow the path of like society tells you to, like kids, marriage, house, picket fence, it's okay. Like it's okay to be different. I think just, I, I myself don't feel that pressure, but I know other people similar to my, uh, to my age really, really panic about it. Um, I don't know, I feel like you can have kids up until you're 40 and if that doesn't happen, then it's just not meant for you. And um, yeah, things have a happen of working out just the way they should. So I don't really worry about it. Also, I think when I was younger, I never really wanted to settle down early. I feel like I always, if I put a time on it in my head where I was gonna like family, it would probably be around the age of 35. So to me, I'm not in panic stage yet. <laughs> Anyway, I am going to go to the O2 Centre. That was a really long ramble, wasn't it? <laughs> I'm not sure, I'm not sure the reasoning behind it, but I just was thinking then how much it had helped me. And um, yeah, even this year, I've had such weird things happen in my love life and I just don't take it, like I just don't look into it anymore. I'm like, you do you, honey, but I'm going to remove myself from this situation. Yeah, I just thought I'd, I just thought I'd have a little share of my, my love life, considering so many people search Laura Blair husband. <laughs> um, I will, I'm very, I'm quite a private person up until the point where it's not private anymore. Do you know what I mean? Like, I would obviously share a relationship online. I think I, like, I, I would, I'd, I'd welcome you into my world, but I'm private up until the point where I'm very sure. Um, yeah. Because I feel like this job really attracts the wrong kind of men. Um, and I have to be very careful about it. I don't know, I feel like I've become very aware of red flags very quickly. It's like a minefield out there. And as well, if you are going through a tough time, I know obviously lockdown. Some people have spent 24-7 with their partners and realised it's not for them. And... I don't know, I think it's it's probably a year where people have questioned their relationships a lot. And if you are going through a bad time, I have like a really good system. If you are, if you are her, if you're in a relationship that doesn't make you happy, for instance, you could love a person completely and like be upset. Like you can be so in love with someone. I don't, I'm saying this, I've never been in love, I don't know. <laughs> but um, you can really want to like love someone as a person, but actually if they, if you're not happy in a relationship, like you have to judge your, your happiness levels as a whole during the time, like have I been happy since I've been in this relationship? And if you are not, you just have to pull off the band-aid like a, <laughs> because I can guarantee like my advice to someone in my early twenties would be dump him sooner because you will get over it, you will so get over it, it's just that initial period that's like, ouch. So don't prolong it if it's inevitably gonna happen. You'll know deep down, like, you can fancy the pants of someone, you can be obsessed with someone, but actually, are they making you happy? No. Um, your happiness is so important and don't be blinded by someone that's not, do not making you happier. And also, <laughs> If you have just like been dumped or been cheated on or anything like that, I've been there. Like I have had the most horrific things happen to me in my 20s. I was in a relationship for three years. and I didn't even get dumped. I got ghosted. I never saw the boy again. And I think that three years nearly, I think that's horrific. And do you know what? That was awful. But I can, 
I just needed closure like it was a very weird thing like to be so close with someone for three years and then them just literally disappear into thin air I have not seen the person again um I allow my day like my day of an emotional shit I call it where you you cry you t you like get upset you put the duvet on you put the film you get a bath but after you've had your emotional shit day you have to go to the gym work out get in a good state of mind, like refresh, um, have a shower, like just as soon as you're like a few days of that emotional shit and you're up and you're out and you, you use that energy. I learned to channel anger and channel that sadness into like my career. So anytime like I was treated badly or had that feeling of like, oh, adrenaline or like, so I channeled it into something that was going to make my life better. So yeah, that's a little tip on someone that's very used to getting uh, screwed over. And I say, like, people would be like, oh, poor you, poor you. Or, like, think that in their head. But I, I think sometimes, I don't know, it's not anything to do with the person. It's about the people that I've attracted into my life. That is the issue, the people that I've let, let into my life. And I've, I've learned that I need to become more aware of who I let in and their reasons behind pursuing me because that is a big one <laughs> and it really rambled for like 10 minutes it's probably the whole vlog see you later <laughs> tune in tomorrow for more rambling but yeah let's go to the o2 center and just one last note where i am today um a couple of years ago four years ago i think i started this now properly um i was in the worst place in my life like i was in i was in such a bad place i was so thin Guys, if I'm ever thin, don't ever skinny shame me. I get, I'm get i naturally slim person and when I go under the line, it's because something is usually to do with, I'm usually slim when it's to do with men. Um, they really affect my anxiety. It's the only thing that gives me like bad anxiety and I just lose weight really quickly. Four years ago, I was lost so much weight. I think I must have lost about three quarters of a stone. Um, I had no money. I was zero, if that, and I moved back in with my parents. I had a job that I hated. People are perving on my flat, so what are you doing? <laughs> I'm really paranoid about that now. Um, honestly, I, at 28 years old, I moved back in with my parents. Like, I would just pack my bags and move back in at 28. I had no relationship, I had no money, I had nothing. I just finished a degree, I did get first class honours, and couldn't get a job after it. And I was just in such a, I don't want to say low place because I've never felt depressed, but I wasn't in a good place, you know? Like if you looked around me, everything was shit. Um, I'd lost touch with m some of my bestest friends. I'd really just, I'd got myself into a relationship where, in, where I'd, I was going through something emotionally myself and I'd shut off all my friends around me. And from the outside perspective, it probably thought that I was having a great time and that I um, had was just met the love of my life and dropped everything. And actually it was the complete opposite. I was really struggling with something mentally myself and I shut everyone out, like as if I didn't want to talk about it. And it was, I don't know, it was just such a, I just, when things hit the fan, I shut down. So I've warned my friends in the future, if this happens, check on me because like, I'm not happy. And I think that's where social media can be so crazy because you can think that like someone's happy and they are not. Um, so never look at someone else's life and think, oh, they must have it all because you, you never know. So four years ago, I was in such a crap place and literally the life i live now is completely different i have honestly never been proud of myself to get from rock bottom to here in like a few years i have i am so financially stable more than i could ever imagine um i have the most amazing friends in my life and like just what I've achieved in four years out of hitting rock bottom is a lot. So if you're ever there, don't let yourself slump. Like use that energy to create the life that you want because we've all been there. It's 
it's not what happens to your life it's how you deal with it and like when you're at that bottom you can go two ways choose which choose which way um so don't look at someone else and think they've had it easy because you have no idea what goes on behind closed doors even the closest people around you you've no idea what go truly goes on behind closed doors um so yeah just a little bit of inspo for you if you're in a bad place you can turn it around turn it around you're never too old to start all over again just on the way out the door and had loads of deliveries come um so I'm going to show you a sneak peek, but maybe we'll do a little unboxing later. I have a bag from Zach Posen. If you see, I've got like floral bag straps. Zach Posen handbags are just so beautifully detailed that I just adored them. So this is the bag. I've done a little bit of unboxing already, but um, this is the clasp. Look how beautiful. It's got like a beading around the side. <gasps> oh, I might actually put that on now. And then this is interesting. This is from Origins. I'm not quite sure. We'll have a little look later. I've literally taken so long to get out this flat today that I don't think I'm ever leaving. And now I can't find my mask. Anybody else have this issue? I'm like, what do I do with them? I've lost so many masks. Like, where are they? Hi guys, I don't know if you can hear me. I always think you can't hear me. And then when I listen back, we can. So I'm hoping for the best, even with the mask on. I definitely need to up my mask game. This keeps going into my mouth every time I breathe. <laughs> but I've just shopped. Um, it's discounted here at the, it's called Icon at the O2, Icon Outlet. So you've got Nike, you've got Ted Baker, Calvin, Tommy Hilfiger, my lungs are really bad today. Um, Levi, so I cannot wait to show you what I've picked up. I'm doing an IGT with GTV with them, so disclosure. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I've managed to pick up some really cool stuff. Got some Nike trainers, got a beautiful Ted Baker coat, and it's like a fraction of the price, so super good. Um, but look, I want to show you how cool it is. We've got some glittery steps. You've got like an Instagram thingy here, and when the O2 back opens, you can go see a concert as well. So there's a food section as well, so it's a really cool place to come shop. Um, like a different place to come shop than the usual. So yeah, it's a really pretty little flower area. You can hear me now a little bit better, but if you look behind me, you'll be able to see. Can you see it? It's the O2 center. Like um, the big structure behind. <laughs> Probably just seen right up my nostrils. <laughs> so guys, we are out. We are out at a restaurant, like an actual restaurant. How happy do you feel about this situation? So I'm gonna get tea and wine. No. No wine. <laughs> Tea and fries. But this is where we've just been shooting around Baker Street, hence why we've got suitcases with us because we're always in tow. So we have just been shooting and now we're just in Baker Street having some food. So it's a really, really cute little restaurant, but it's actually a hotel. We came here last year, didn't we? Yeah. And it's a really nice hotel inside. So if you ever want somewhere to stay, definitely recommend oh, here. What's it called? <laughs> the kitchen at home. Of course. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Thank you. So this is our food guys, look how good these chips are very good, very hot. And we got some little tapas, tomato-y thing. This is a cute little setup, look at us. So 2019 vibes. <laughs> I can tell you off for being on your phone again. <laughs> how nice is this? Just feels so good to be out and not sat in my flat. I feel like I get, oh, oh my God. <laughs> Good morning guys. I wanted to start this vlog off looking like this because I mentioned in a few vlogs ago how I hadn't put any heat on my hair in months and I get the curl look by Pink Curls. So I literally just blast it with the cold of a hairdryer and then I just roll it up and put it in these pins. It's great for thin hair to add volume and you just get a curl without adding any heat, which for my hair has been a real lifesaver. So I just wanted to show you me Nana curl so you knew how I created volume in my hair. And then I'll show you when I, I take it down in a minute. The doorbell has just arrived, like gone downstairs. And I am praying it is my laptop. I have been without a computer in so long. I've been using my 10 year old iMac, which is like a snail, so pray, pray for me. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know how hard it's been to get videos out and like reels because it's been so slow I literally want I've wanted to chuck it out the window so 
<laughs> this is what it looks like when I have just taken the pink curls out. So you get like little ringlets. So I'm just gonna brush this through. So this is it brushed through and this is generally just how I do my hair. And then I'm just gonna add one little layer of extensions in the bottom. Like I said, milk and blush. But yeah, this is how I create volume when you've got really fine hair. Sorry, I keep looking at the viewfinder. And then I've just stuck um, my extensions in the bottle, bottom and it I kind of just brush it through. So for me, uh, really minimal breakage doing that, like no heat whatsoever. Don't dye it, don't heat it. And my hair's got so much better. I keep these clip-ins literally only when I film so it's not permanent. Um, and yeah, lots of hair masks. And I think just this past year, cause I got my hair into such a good state. If you look back at the start of my YouTube channel, <laughs> my hair was really good and thick. I went on Roaccutane, which I am so grateful for. Like it sorted my skin out so much. I don't really ever get a spot, um, touch wood. Um, but my, it, one of the side effects is losing your hair and my hair fell out quite badly with Roaccutane. It went so thin afterwards. Um, probably lost about half of it maybe so it's taken me such a long time to get it in such a good condition again but as I said reacting was definitely worth it so if you're struggling with your skin honestly it changed my life um so yeah and when I say I had spots I had very bad spots guys it, it's not worth it if you get the odd pimple but I had horrendous cystic acne so today I am going to carry on what I was doing the other day because I didn't get a chance to go through all the outfits. So I'm going to have another styling session with you guys. I think today everything is from River Island maybe because they did a huge order. They just had some really good stuff on. So a, an epic amount of jeans. Um, I just really wanted to get some great jeans in my wardrobe, like different kinds of jeans. So I've got lots of different colours, lots of different styles. So let's create some outfits. So this is a caramel and blazer. I've mentioned it before. I think they brought it back. So if you checked it out, it was out of stock. I believe they brought it back. It's linen. So it's got this really gorgeous kind of relaxed fit to it. I've just paired it on with this little cami from next long time ago, Louboutin brown side and then the jeans. The jeans are what's new. So these are called Blair jeans. <laughs> um, my name's Laura Blair by the way, that's, that's if you didn't get that. <laughs> so I just think this is a great really relaxed um, but smart kind of look. Just paired it with some loafers but equally pop it on with some heels. You've got a gorgeous kind of more glam look. Just so I can show you the butt area to check if you think it's flattering or not. I don't know. <laughs> So they're quite loose fitting around here. They're not super tight around the leg. I'd probably want, I I probably enjoyed them a little bit tighter, but if you wanted like a more baggy fit, then these are definitely worth a try. Okay, so these trousers, what you can't see is the most fabulous tassel detailing right here, which I love. So they are beautiful. I'll give them that. I have just got them on with flat shoes here. You can see I've got heels here. I think they were the perfect length for a wide leg flat shoe situation because as you can see they are not touching the floor whatsoever. The moment I pop it on with a heel they seem a little bit too short, let me show you. So these are them with the kitten heel on and I feel like that is just the wrong vibe. So definitely if you have a long leg, so I've got maybe like a 32 or 33 inch inner leg, I think you need a tall. But saying that, with flat shoes, I think they are the perfect length for not scuffing along the flooring. So it depends whether you're wanting a like a flat, wide leg trouser, then this is great. I actually have these in white as well, but I love this silhouette. I think this silhouette is beautiful, like the asymmetric with the pinched in waist. And I don't think it's coming up how gorgeous this tassel detailing is. I think that's absolutely beautiful. Okay, first up, let's talk about the shirt. So, what I love about this is this little gathered detailing. The bold arms is very well structured. It doesn't look like River Island. It looks very expensive. That's what I like in clothes. So, I've just paired it with these jeans. They're very similar to the other ones in the fact that they have the, the split at the bottom. I quite like that. My toes, dire. <laughs> So as you can see, they've got the same slit at the bottom, but slightly smaller around the bum. Do I like them around the bum? By the way, I've got black pants on under all, all these, so you can tell that they're quite thick. 
Um, it is flattering on the bum. I do like that. They fit really well. So very true to size. I'll leave all my sizing down below. I really do enjoy a cream jean in spring. I think it just makes it like brighter, lighter, even though like if you wore this in the winter with black trousers, it would make it a very winter outfit. I think cream jeans are perfect for like the warmer months. Okay. This outfit is representing how cool I feel right now. I have just done my hack. I've got my Louis Vuitton belt on the brown way round. And then I've just added this spiky one. We're layering belts. It's a new thing I'm enjoying doing. <laughs> okay, so the shirt is from ASOS. It's a really great oversized one. I love the cuffs, I love the shape of it. So the leggings are the split legging ones and they are skin tight, which is what I love because they're really flattering around that foot. <gasps> This trench coat I thought was so designer-esque. It's got like this scarf as like the middle bit. It really got me thinking about putting scarves around as a belt. I saw some great Louis Vuitton scarves for like really quite um, reasonable prices. I think they were like 50 quid in designer exchange. Imagine taking out the belt of a trench and putting a Louis Vuitton one around. It's got, it's got me thinking, I might get it. <laughs> so this is a River Island Trench, and just I just love this kind of belt. I thought this was great to throw on over really basic. These are um, River Island jeans as well. I've just got some white trainers on with it. Just popped on with my YSL back, and I think this is a really easy look. Like, look how great that trench coat looks. Think when it's raining in England, this is perfect. Even hanging down loose, I really like it. The print is actually... <laughs> <laughs> Very similar to Dior. I see what they did there. I wish River Island didn't do the River Island emblem as much. I feel like this is not noticeable, but um, I feel like I'd buy so much more of their stuff if it didn't have River Island emblazoned all over it, because some of their stuff is really so good and so designer-esque. Then it's just got River Island, and it's like, why? 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 So River Island, if you're listening, please stop putting River Island on your clothes. No one wants to know that. <laughs> Okay, so a bit about the jeans. They were like a deep blue. I was really missing like a deep blue in my wardrobe. However, I don't think they're from the petite section, but I don't like how cropped they are on me. I um, like how fitted they are around the butt. They're like really, really tight. But for me, these would work great with boots because you can see them, but I feel like I would want, I would need them a little. They're like pedal pushes. Pedal pushes? I love how it makes me laugh, actually it makes me die a little bit inside that all these, um, is it Gen Z, are doing all 90s looks and it's like when you were there the first time round for the trend, it doesn't look trendy, it looks really dated and however much like you can see these Gen Zs like trying to be, well, acting cool with it on, I'm like, it just seems so dated. I was there the first time. I was there for Britney, the Spice Girls, and I was like, 90s fashion coming back in fashion is like so the bizarrest thing to me. And um, pedal pushers obviously were so huge in the 90s. Just you wait, Gen Z is. Go get your pedal pushers. <laughs> Do you remember them? Pedal pusher jeans. Anyway, I'm rambling, but I feel like it's a sign a sign of your age when your childhood fashion comes back. Like, I was a teenager in the 90s. Like, I, I was there the first time around. Like, it's so weird. I find it so weird. Anybody else? So, I feel like this is a very Laura outfit. If you caught me in my downtime, this is the type of thing I would turn up to your house in. <laughs> So, I have just got on the cardigan from River Island. I love this cardigan. Let me show you a little closer. This is such a gorgeous thick knit. Like, I don't know what it is. These cardigans feel really lovely and like fall really nicely and they don't look cheap at all. I've just rolled the sleeves up, but obviously you can have them down like that as well. Um, quarter sleeve going on. I've just got Louis Vuitton belt round and then these jeans, I've already taken the label off because I really enjoyed them. So I'm a skinny jean kind of girl. I feel like you just have to find the jean that suits your body type. I suit skinny jeans. But um, I really enjoy the slit at the bottom to make it like a more relaxed kind of feel. I feel like the slit makes it easier to wear with flat shoes. And yeah, I really love these jeans. I cannot recommend them enough. And they fit lovely around the bum as well. So I've got six regular, I think, which is pretty much spot on. That's like very true to size for me. And then to finish off the look, Ralph Lauren sunglasses. They're like brown aviators. They go really well with the brown Louis Vuitton vibes. Then Louis Vuitton bag, and then I've just got some flat gold flip-flops on. Is it flip-flop season yet? 
is it i don't know i'm not too sure i feel like the weather's all over the place in england at the moment who knows <laughs> okay this is the same cardigan but in white there's something so demure about white i think it's just very like angelic and pristine and i don't know i just really like white you know this, I wear it all the time. So this is the white cardigan from Over Island. A white next cami, it's just a cami from next, it's old. Um, the jeans are Over Island again. These are them with heels this time. Feel like they work really nicely with the little slit at the front. YSL bag, got my For Art Sake sun. These sunglasses, by the way, are from For Art Sake. Lots of people ask me about that. Um, I think these ones are sold out, but they have some beautiful sunglasses. So I'll leave the page to For Art's Sake down below. But yeah, this is a really casual, but very beautiful, slightly glam outfit. <laughs> so this blazer, I just absolutely loved it. I loved the tassel detail on it. I thought it was a really nice touch for like a neutral blazer. The fabric's almost like a linen kind of vibe, so it's really lovely on the skin, like it's really comfortable to wear. Just paired it with the slit jeans and some kitten heels, and then I've just popped it on with the Louis Vuitton bag, but I just think this is so gorgeous. Really love this blazer. Let me know if this blazer is good. <laughs> I, feel like it's, I feel like it's one that's just such a good find, and I cannot believe it's from River Island. I'm loving these tassel details that they're bringing out as well, like on the trousers, on the blazer, so gorgeous. And yeah, this is... This is the final look. Okay, so this is the white version of the black one I had on before. Um, I don't think it's see-through at all. I feel like they're not see-through. Um, they have the same issue with the pants as well. Like if I put a heel on with them, they would just be too short. So it's definitely for flat shoes, which isn't a bad thing. I feel like sometimes that's good, right? Um, finding wide leg trousers perfect for flat shoes is quite difficult so I've just again paired it with the white I literally have just the white version of that black outfit so whatever tickles your fancy white or black I think white's gorgeous for summer I feel like it's a really gorgeous look but um, black is obviously very flattering silhouette I'm kind of blending into the wall right now aren't I <laughs> but again we have the tassel detailing here I feel like even this would look great with that shirt blouse that I had on before um, if you wanted a more like shirt kind of vibe. But this silhouette is 100% something that I absolutely love. So I've just popped a chain around my neck and I've paired it with the YSL bag to really finish off the look. This is definitely gorgeous for a lady that lunches in the sunshine vibe. <laughs> okay, I've kept my sunglasses on because of like this just shows off the whole look. The brown, the brown, the brown. I feel like I wanted this to be better I feel like I envisioned it to be better, you know? But is it good? I like it, yeah. I think I do like it. <laughs> I'm so indecisive. Okay, so let me put my sunglasses on my head because I look like a right knob, don't I? Hang on. Okay, so this is how it's looking. The jeans are from River Island. Um, the jacket is from Zara. The cami is from Next, long time ago, and obviously the accessories Louis Vuitton. Okay, so let me talk about everything individually. Let's put this down. So this jacket, I feel, is for a long torso. <laughs> I feel like I am the opposite to what Zara models its stuff on. So I feel like this would need to be a little bit higher for me because it covers, it makes me look like a beanpole basically. It's not a flattering fit for my body type. Um, the jeans, I really love these flare kind of jeans. They're a tad too short. I feel like they need to be longer. I feel like if you're gonna do a flare, they need to be really to the ground. Um, I just paired it with some trainers. And I've accessorized it with brown accessories. But um, yeah, I think the sizing of the jeans and the top for me is a little bit off. But apart from that, I do like the look. Just I think I would need to get the right sizing. You're still okay. You always pick me up the 